Welcome to Women and Grace's Motivational Monday. This month, we are focused on our identity, who we are in Christ. And since we just celebrated Mother's Day, I thought we should take time to talk about God's view of biblical womanhood versus the cultural view of womanhood and how that impacts our identity. This week's verse is Psalm 139, 14. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. I believe that due to a misconception of what biblical womanhood is and how the culture portrays womanhood, we see most women struggle to define womanhood for themselves. Women are pressured now more than ever to take on more and more responsibility, yet feel more undervalued and overwhelmed. I speak with many women who are torn between the expectations and roles that the culture places on them and what their heart's desire is. We see that when we believe these false perspectives of womanhood, it causes great impact, not only on women, but also on our marriages and family and society as a whole. The culture's view of womanhood has always been defined by what value or lack of value the culture at that time places on women. Much is based on what they do and how they look. In our American culture, the feminist movement is an attempt to liberate women so women can be all that a man can be, but instead, I feel like it's restricted women by its standards. Women are told, you can do anything a man can do, so you need to be strong and driven and in control and successful and logical and single-focused and self-sufficient. We, we are encouraged as women to view men as competition, as inferior, as someone to take down, to emasculate, yet at the same time are told that our feminine attributes like compassion, sacrificial love, sensitivity, nurturing, intuition, the ability to multitask are weaknesses that we need to remove in order to succeed in the career world, which is where your value is formed and what you do. So being a wife and a mother is viewed as not enough and doesn't carry value on its own because it's in what you do to make a name for yourself or to bring in the money. On top of that, we are given this added pressure based on how we look. Women are given value by maintaining a certain body composition and beauty based on what the culture determines is beautiful at that time. This expectation is not only unreasonable, it's impossible to achieve no matter how much it costs both financially and physically, but it also devalues women. When we as women view ourselves through the culture's view of womanhood, we are pressured to keep striving to attain a false value that we can never accomplish while suppressing who we feel in our hearts we were meant to be. Biblical womanhood, on the other hand, is misunderstood to mean suppressive, submissive servitude, where women have less value than men, when actually the biblical view of womanhood brings freedom and value. Biblical womanhood says you are valuable for who you are, not what you do. We see from the beginning that God valued women and had a unique purpose and a plan for them like he did for men. In Genesis 1:27, God said, let us make man in our image. In his image, he created them, male and female, he created them. We see in this verse that God made them in his image and made them both male and female. He placed within each of them his attributes, uniquely male, uniquely female, but equally valuable. Both together, not individually, reflect God perfectly. We were made to complement each other, not compete against each other. We see in Genesis 2 that it was not good for man to be alone. God created the woman as a helper beside him. In Hebrew, it's Azer Kenegado, which means helper, not as in servant, but as in savior, rescuer, protector, caretaker, as in God is our help. It's a word used for God 16 times and only for women twice. So it's never thought of as inferior. Kenegado alongside him means opposite of him, meaning Eve was the other half like him, but with opposite attributes. The woman was not created to be the man, nor to serve the man, but to serve with the man. Without the woman, the man is only half the story. What this means is that women were not an afterthought or an optional add-on to an independent, self-sufficient man. 
God said that without her, the man's condition was not good. The only not good recorded in creation. God's intention in creating the woman was for, for the man was for the two to be partners with different roles so that they could accomplish the many tasks involved in stewarding God's creation. Each using their God-given attributes, male and female, needed to fulfill these roles. For those of us who have been called to be a mom, whether through birth or adoption, there is no higher calling than to be trusted with a human life to shape into the image of Christ. When trying to balance where you should commit yourself and your time, remember that although there are many things we can do well, there are only a few things that are uniquely ours to do. No one else can fill these roles. Only you can pursue your relationship with God. Only you can be the wife to your husband. Only you can be the mother to your children. So these need to become your first priorities before all other things, no matter what the culture tells you. I know this may seem foreign to our culture, but we can all see the effects of what doing it the cultural way has brought. Erasing femininity, emasculating men, devaluing of male and female genders, destruction of marriages and family. As a result, society as a whole has been impacted with chaos, crime, confusion, even in our children not knowing who they are and more. I believe that if we as women chose to remove the false values of society and embraced our value in how God has gifted us with attributes and roles that only we can fulfill, we as women would not only have peace and purpose and value and confidence in who we are, but we would see not only the restoration of the family, but a changed society as well. So my challenge for you this week is to reflect on who God created you to be, a woman who was perfectly fashioned with a purpose to impact not only her marriage and family, but the world. Don't let the culture try to determine your value. Break free from that pressure. Your value and purpose has already been determined by your creator. You are woman, so you don't need to roar. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, we love you so much. We thank you, God, for how you carefully fashioned us, Lord. You gave us attributes and roles, Father, to fulfill because we have a purpose and a plan in our lives, Lord. We are valuable to you. God, help us to remember that as we feel the pressures of society weighing on us to try to shape who we are, God. Help us to remember who we are in you. God, we thank you for all that you do. And God, we ask that you would use us to impact not only our marriages and our family, our churches, but Lord, society as a whole, the world for you, that we would reflect you perfectly in all that we do. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you, ladies. Don't ever forget how valuable you are to God. God bless you. Have a great week.